No, I did. I lost on time. That's what happened. Well, that's the first time you've ever lost on. You never have time management problems. I mean, that's, that's not, true. That's yeah. not you. You play so fast, man. Mm. I can't even keep mm. up with your play, actually. Blistering fast. I know Indeed. the speed is unreal. I've learned bullet chess from you, actually. So how have you Thanks, felt man. since um, since Fog Champs? Do you feel mentally recovered, ready to ready to get even better? Yeah, I actually feel even sharper. I took like three days off, and then I played four matches last night, and I won three out of four. Wow! And then today I'm two and two, right? I don't think I've That's lost. That's crazy. Yet. You're almost back to nine hundred. Uh, but yeah, I think the break is is very important, especially after like a big tournament victory like that, when your nerves are shot. Um, sometimes like. I've had some of my best tournaments, and I'd come home, and I'd play, I'd binge online chess, like, at a celebration, and I'd play, like, some of my absolute worst chess, because, like, I couldn't yeah. focus, I was too jittery, so I'm glad you took the break and uh, are ready to get refocused again. I'm absolutely ready, man, yeah, take me under your wing here, let me suck on that bosom, where are we, where are we heading? Absolutely, uh, I think we're heading, uh, I know you've gotten warmed up a little bit, but I need to uh, reacclimatize to watching, you know, greatness in action, so... Right. Why don't we start with one or two uh, warm-up games in the pool? And you can walk me through your newfound uh, mastery of the game. That sounds like a plan. Yeah, that Indeed. works for me. And we'll go from there. I have some exercises prepared. And we're going to take this thing to the next level. This is where things actually get kind of fun. Yes. Well, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> All right. So this one. Four Knights Defense. Fascinating. Yeah, this is, this is classics, man. The classics. Yeah, they can't can't escape them. Oh, he's already stumped. In Norway, apparently, where this guy's from, they don't have any good chess players from Norway, other than this idiot Magnus Carlsen. Who's is he from Norway? He is. Oh wow. He's from Norway. Yeah. Nice. And he, I I have a funny story about him, but okay. So actually, mm. thanks Julius for the sub. Um. He has made already a mistake, believe it or not. Oh, well, yeah, he blocked his bishop before developing right. it. That's the conceptual part of the mistake. You can actually punish him uh, tactically, though. Is it by pinning the knight to king here? Yeah, his knight's defended, huh. so that's not such a big deal. Um, look at, I mean, remember, let's go back to first principles. What is the weakest pawn on the board? You start mean right game. now or in general? In general, when when you start the game, what is the weakest square on the chessboard? A square that's only defended by the king and by nothing else. Right, which is that f7 pawn right now. Could you put pressure on it? Uh, I mean, I believe I could, yeah. So I can bring my knight over there to g5. Is this when we want to do the g5 yes, play? Yes, this is right? one of the few times, and this might seem like childish or amateurish, but he cannot defend the pawn. He can't castle here. Normally, the way to defend against that would be to castle. But, yeah, but he's delayed it. his castling, and so he has to... His best move, relatively speaking, is to play bishop to e6. And he does give up a pawn there because you have two attackers on that square and he's only got one defender. But at least he doesn't lose f7, because if he loses f7, disaster, well, he finds it, okay? Okay, so this is when I would just want to throw bishop at bishop here, right? Yeah, sure. You can take okay. with either piece twice. It doesn't. It's a matter of taste. But, yeah, I, f I feel more comfortable with knights than bishops, to be honest. Well, also because you take with a knight and you attack the queen, so you force yeah. further discoordination in, among his ranks. And what are you waiting for? Mm, uh, so from I take this pawn on e6 yep. with my knight, and then I just drop him back when he attacks? Same or spot. you take the bishop. Yeah, or you can drop it back to the same spot, or you can take the bishop. Either move is fine. Um, whatever you sort of prefer. If you prefer slight simplification, I would take the bishop just because, you know, that's when you can eliminate this many board. pieces up a pawn, that's, that's not a bad idea. And continue developing okay. as normal. Okay, so even though it's only uh, uh, one pawn up, it's still worth, you'd say? Well, excuse me, Your Honor, that it's, it's not a... I, I haven't <laughs> served you a queen on a golden platter. Um, us plebeians well, not, have to satisfy ourselves with mere pawns. Okay, I'm just, hey, I'm just making sure. No, no. And, and I know what you're saying. Like, sometimes you orchestrate all this all this business for just, like, a measly little pawn. But the higher rank you become, like, the the more important, like, very, very small gains in the position become, like, pawns. Like, to me, if I had this position against Black with a fellow Grandmaster, 
like this this guy Turbo Fisto is known as as uh, someone who's very good at converting advantages. I would already basically be considering close to considering resignation, especially after Rook D8. Now he deprives himself of castling rights on top of things. <laughs> I see. So you're a quitter, is what you're telling me, eh? Mm -hmm. Well, that that's what you imply. If that's what you choose to imply. Then you know we might have to terminate yeah, our okay. coaching relationship. But, um, so from here, it's just normal development right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah. Gotta, gotta, can't get away from that. And look at his king. Like he should have castled long at least. Now his king's stranded in the center. Yeah. So he's looking to get in here on c2, but that's not really much of a bother right now, right? I can just develop queen out here to protect that. Or is Wait, that the your best? queen's already protecting c2. Yeah, but it, it's not developed. Do I just want to do bishop anyway? Bishop. Yeah. Where Where do you yeah. thinking? Where are you thinking of developing that bishop? I was thinking E4 or E3, so yep. that way I could look towards hanging pawns. Good. So you want to, and also you can potentially remove that knight from the board, as you kind of mentioned, and, and ruin his pawn structure. See, I like that you're not automatically going to G5 all the time. Yeah, I've definitely broken that habit. I think the, the fork training is what was really helpful with that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so now the question is, do you take the knight or do you leave it on D4? What what does your gut say? Uh, in a situation like this, I would probably take it on yeah, my own take it take it get rid of it because it's it's annoying you it's it's sitting on d4 it's his only strong piece and also you're forcing him to get you know doubled pawns which is not an ideal thing to have he takes with this one okay now you need to think immediately about where you want to park this knight in the long run um it's not about the next move it's about where you want to maneuver this knight two moves into the game and we've talked about this um we've talked about this particular maneuver before actually yeah, so it's not going to d5 right now since the knight's still on it, even though that's attacking his queen. Or is that actually what you had in mind? Wait, which move? Knight to d5. I like it. it. I love it. Because, and you can play that move. Do you see what happens after the knight trade? What additional benefit do you derive from that trade? Uh, the only thing I see is it's opening up a file. Bingo, but rookie one might win his queen. Oh, yes, because he hasn't... Oh, right, so this right, is right, a right. different yeah. level of thinking already. Yeah. You're thinking like three four steps ahead what does a trade create that's not something we used to do right now does right. it have any drawbacks yes it does you make a weak pawn of, of your own on d5 but it's it's totally worth yeah i this isn't even something i even looked at i guess i'm just so used to like knowing the king's not there because people castle but yeah well me too actually this is an unusual position okay he doesn't take your knight okay mm -hmm. well that means i can't pin that queen after a take with his knight this time around so you want to go uh, cry about it in the corner for a little while? Well, not necessarily. Or not, not today. No, I mean, I, I'm a big, I'm a big boy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what comes right. to mind here? Uh, taking his knight with my knight just pushes his rook up. Uh, so I don't know. What is your opinion on that? Having the rook being up on the six rank there? It doesn't really matter. I would just do it for the sake of simplicity. It's one of those things I told you where it really doesn't matter where his rook is. Your king is very safe anyway, so it's not like he's going to be orchestrating a rook lift. And okay. it's, it, I would just remove the tension from the board here because you are up a pawn. And after you take his knight, then you can work on activating your queen and connecting your rooks. And then uh, okay. perhaps even preparing an e5 pawn push to open up the center. That allows you to exploit the weakness of his king. So what comes to mind here? Well, with all the fort training, I was looking at immediately seeing if I could win anything by putting him in check on h5, see if I could slide anything. But since that pawn's defended on c5, that doesn't work. But if how I about push the that pawn e on h7? That's true. I could win the pawn on h7. But what I was looking at, if I did go to e5, he takes with his pawn. I put him in check. I win that pawn. I put him in check one more wow. time. Wow. Okay. Yes. I. That is like the highest level combination you've found thus far. So you want to play pawn really? to e5. 20 bucks for yeah. peanuts. And then queen h5, picking off that pawn, opening up mm -hmm. the e-file. Okay, I will give you my daily piece of praise. That was kind of sick. Okay, that is yep. not something you would have found a little bit earlier. Oh, but he... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this guy's in the chat. There's no one that would have seen that. Yeah, rook right h6 there. is a very um, high level. Yeah. But it's still, I mean, remember why you played e5. You played it in order to yeah, open but... up the e-file. So go ahead and do that. Just yeah, be it's very a shame careful. that I... <laughs> Damn it. I can't believe, yeah, these people, like, immediately he doesn't take the pawn, too. It's not like he I thought know. about it. Okay, what is his threat? So right now, he's looking to get queen over there on h2 by attacking that pawn. 
defend so, it. So, yeah. So the natural way of defending that, right, is just pushing up to g3 with the sure. pawn. Sure. Good move. Blunting the queen. It's yep. better than playing h3, I would say, because now the queen is just staring at the stronghold on, on g3. Yeah, I always worry about playing h3 when it's being attacked like that, just because yeah. I'm never quite sure, you know, like, I don't have an escape there or anything, and I don't have a way of getting in. It's just not that... Oh, yeah, you're right. The queen on d6 still defends h2, so it doesn't fully defend your back rank. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah he's definitely not playing, like, an 800, but neither are you, so... <laughs> Thanks, Profernity, for the... As, as this one guy would say, the fat... The fat sub. <laughs> <laughs> I've started yeah, saying that like unwitting. Thank you for the fat ten gift subs. <laughs> really? It's a, it's a nice thing. Are to you say. gonna sue me for plagiarism? Mm -hmm. You're gonna. You're gonna give me a pass this one time. Yeah, I'll let it slide. I'm not. I don't have catchphrases. You know, it's not a big deal. Jesus, this guy's out for blood. So where is he going with his queen? Uh, so he's dropped to d7. He's now got the two diagonals going over to a4. If you doesn't really get too much out of that position i have a hanging pawn at b2 if he brings his queen over to b5 look the other way though okay and then on the other diagonal he can squeeze in to maybe look for a rook or he's going to bring the queen over to h3 Bingo. and still do the same plan so by bringing the queen to h3 though he abandons his own king so you need to urgently pre prepare urgently prepare the maneuver of the a1 rook to e1 but to do that what do you need to do first I need to move my queen. And so what is the most active square for the queen? E2. It's a quick check, and then I bring rook in. Okay, but I would actually not give that check because it sends the king over to f8 where it wants to go anyway. Cut the king off from a potential escape via f8 to g8. So where can the queen go to cut the king off entirely? Bringing the queen over to f3. That's what I would actually do. Okay. Now, now, I guess check that makes is not sense. a bad idea, um, but queen f3 is the most accurate execution here. Okay. Because we're tempting him into going queen to h3, which leaves his king basically wide open. Now, he does threaten checkmate, but you basically come first. Like, it's your first... You are the first one to start punching him, you know? Yeah. What's up, Ahashmi? And, yeah, he's definitely finding some, some pretty high-level ideas, I have to say. Not I mean, he's listening to you right now. Of course he is. Well, okay, now he does play queen h3, so what do you do? So what came to mind for me was bringing the rook in here on e1, and or mm -hmm. well, yeah, bringing rook into e1 that puts him in check. He can't block. I mean, yeah, do it. No, so. do it, do it, do it. Um, he can block with his rook, but okay. So now you have to look for ways to continue attacking moves that occurred to you. Uh, the first move that came to mind was pushing queen to d5, which puts another check on there. The problem would... there is he escapes to c8. Can you do that so that he doesn't escape with his king to c8? Uh, by going over to b7. Yep. Yeah. That's the best move. Okay. And the problem is your time situation is a little monka ass, but, you know. Okay, so King you up to D6. You are fully assimilating into Twitch culture. Oh, completely, completely. So now, I mean, yeah. it depends on whether you think you're going to make it. See, the best move here is actually to just defend against checkmate with Queen G2 and transition into an endgame two pawns up. But because you're so low on time, I would actually repeat moves and make a draw here just because you're so low on time. So which other check can you give? Um... Just e7. Better than e7. You keep allowing the king to walk over to like c6. Don't allow the king to Ooh. to walk over to the other side of the board. It's another. It's a different kind of check. Uh, I'm a little confused. The uh... it's the only other possible queen check other than e7. Literally the only other one. Bringing it to a6. Yes. Oh. And once you do that, uh, see, the point is that if he uh, plays king c7, one. you can take the pawn on a7. You kind of box him in. Now I would just repeat moves if I were you, because you have no, no time left. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. he's Fine. definitely played a, played a very good game. Now, you are technically winning here after queen g2, but you're also not, Usa not the Usain Bolt of chess, so... Okay, so yeah. do you see the defense, though? Do you see what I mean by queen g2? 
Yeah, so what you wanted me to do there is when I uh, take over on the pawn, so g7, I take, or on, um, Jesus. Uh, I put queen over there like I'm fianchettoing the queen. Yeah. And then we just trade down. There. Yeah, he can choose not to trade queens, but his king is so wide open. Then your king becomes safe. We trade queens and you get an end game where you have two pawns up, which is basically yeah. completely winning for white. Um, but essentially... Um, before you jump into the next game, let me let me let me do the dreaded thing of inviting you very quickly, just very quickly to an analysis board. Yeah, just no a problem. couple of things I wanted to get because I know I was a little confusing with some of the um, the guidelines for checking. Okay, just invited you. Yeah, so essentially, um, blah blah blah. So first of all, does this make sense? He has no other defense of this square. Yeah. Now, if I were actually playing white against, let's say, a GM, there is like a five head move here that I didn't point out to you. Where actually, and maybe you'll try, you can try to find it. It's I'll give you this hint. It's not moving this knight, believe it or not. Hmm. You do not move this knight, and somehow you indirectly defend it. Yeah, I think I see it immediately. So you're just pushing the other knight to d5. Exactly. So when he takes you fork and win a queen. Exactly. And he's got to take your knight. And the second purpose of this move is you take with a pawn. Look at this bone in his throat. Yeah. He's got to bring the knight back to d8. And now I want you to find another move that normally I wouldn't ask you to find. Again, you don't want to make the concession of moving this knight away. Can you support this knight so that this knight is then replaced by a pawn on e6? To find a defense of the knight where I'm going to end up with a pawn there. Yeah, so you want to keep that bone in his throat, basically. Is it bringing it to queen g4? It is. It, that's exactly it. And look at this position. It looks like a measly pawn on e6, but it's like the freaking sword of Damocles over his position. Your plan here is just to develop pieces. D3, bishop, g5. This is kind of cool. His queen actually could get literally trapped in the center of the board. Look at this. He has yeah, no squares. That's, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I like that. That's how, how effective a pawn can be in a square like e6. Um, so that's what I would do. But here, like, once you've won a pawn, don't spend too long trying to think of alternate wood. Just keep developing your pieces. That's, like the, that's what you default to normally e5 is great and what i meant when i said don't let his king throw so you wanted to give a check on e2 right but That's what i first thought of in back. your mind you have to ask yourself well where is his king going to potentially go to escape all the checks and in my mind i see the square on g8 if the king ends up on g8 it's relatively sheltered by the pawn so the move queen e2 although it is a check it is sending the king to a square that it wants to hide to anyway does that sort of make sense? Yeah, and I think that's something I need to look for. Moves that cut off the king. Yes, as exactly. A... So it, this is not a check. So you're automatically, maybe it's a little bit of a, it occupies a lower standing in your book. Um, right. And the social hierarchy of chess moves, this is like, you know, this is not very high up. But the reality is you've cut the king off from this file. Now you send the king here. And what I meant here is that he's threatening checkmate. So this move doesn't actually yeah. win a rook. This doesn't win a rook because he moves to c6, and it's the same principle. You haven't cut the king off, so it can run even to b5. You don't have any more checks here, so... Well, you actually do, and as a defensive exercise for you, how do you actually defend against checkmate here? Because it seems like you're out of checks. Except you aren't, but I'd like you to exercise that sort of imaginative thinking. Why to play and not get checkmated? And don't you tell me queen f6 check staving off checkmate. No. I know so, what your smart ass brain is thinking. <laughs> is it rook to e6, he takes with rook, I take with rook, it's check again, so it's two checks, then it forces him off? Wait, so you want to go here? That's what I was thinking. And if then rook takes? He, then queen takes, which is another check. Uh, yeah, then queen, queen takes back. The pawn. Now, right. actually, what's amazing about this is you can take the other rook. I didn't even see this idea. And you've distracted the rook from, from uh, making contact with h2. But the yeah, problem is I sense. just go right back to h6 and you're stuck with the same problem. So not quite. There actually is a check here that's a little bit hard to see. It's a little bit of a weird geometry. 
And your goal is, again, to fee and kettle the queen in the end. Right. So I'm looking for a light tile and a, yep. a way to get queen into g2. So it's just bringing the queen down to e4. Bingo. Queen e4 check, queen g2, and you're safe and sound and happy here. So the only reason you didn't do that is, again, because of the time situation. So um, other than that, I mean, this movie five represents serious growth because you not only noticed a fork, you orchestrated a fork. You actually set it up in order to gain an open file. And all of these concepts are, are something that we've only recently started applying. So I'm very happy you found this move. Thanks, man. Yeah, I really think those puzzles really came in mm -hmm. came in big handy to see something like that. Mm -hmm. That's that's awesome. Well, let's jump in for one more. Yeah. If, uh, if your majesty desires. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll hop in there. Sergio Alex 92, of course. A famous Brazilian warrior. Mm, one of the best in the business from Indeed. what I've heard. He's the Steph Curry of Brazil of chess. You probably know. I know who Steph Curry is. I'm just not a sports guy. I don't know why you bring in sports references. Well, you know, some of us watch watch basketball. This is a question I had for you. So he's obviously just mirroring the same thing. Do I want a castle now or just develop bishop? What's better? Develop bishop usually. He Because if he yeah. goes knight g4, then you can castle. Actually, oh, oh my god. Wait, do you remember? Oh, shit, this is going to be cool. You have a trick here that we went over. It's related to legal's mate. It occurs on the same square, and it exploits the fact that the knight on g4 is undefended. Is it just... I, I vaguely remember going over it, but I... It starts with a sacrifice, a temporary sacrifice. Yeah, is it throwing the knight on the pawn at e5 he takes with knight? No, because then that's no, still defending no, the knight. That's defended. not it. You're going the slightly wrong direction. It's not. It doesn't have anything to do with the pawn on e5. What it has to do with is the fact that the knight on g4 is unprotected. So you can see the queen making x-ray contact with the knight on g4. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about this logically, you have to set up a situation where you move the knight from f3 with a gain of tempo, which in our neck of the woods essentially means with check. That should give you enough information to basically orchestrate this combination. I'm moving the knight right now for a check. You first you have to bring the king out onto a square where it can be checked by the knight. Oh, the Greek gift. Oh, right. Bingo. So yeah, this is when we're f7. Exactly. Move the king exactly. g5. That's why he made a mistake here. If his pawn was already on d6, then his bishop would be guarding that knight, so this wouldn't work. But this right. is something you have to remember. It's a I... very common idea. I totally forgot this was a game. I thought we were on the analysis board. <laughs> You're, you're, the analysis board is in your nightmares. What have I done to you? Yeah, exactly. It's cute, though. It's helpful. So when we, so that right there, that's something that's always going to happen when they try and push up for that attack down there, isn't it? Um, yeah. So they, again, tunnel vision, they look at that pawn on F2. Their tongue flies out. Oh, my God. Pawn on F2. I can see it's like, you know, the mouse seeing cheese. But mm -hmm. undefended pieces are... Far from being the center of their mind. Yep. You, did you pre-move that move? No, I actually just dropped it. Okay, on good. It. Because I was going to say, if he took your knight with his queen, um, <laughs> this would not be a very smart move to pre-move. Yeah. And then I would have just taken queen with bishop, so it would have been a real dumb move from him too. Exactly. But people can be dirty like that, like anti-pre-move chess. I do that sometimes. Where you like expect your opponent to pre-move something, it's a trick in bullet chess. And then you basically, okay, so again, this guy is, is playing reasonably. He found a good move here. Yeah, so again, threatening that pawn down there at c2. So the natural way of defending that is just bringing queen all the way back yep. to d1, right? Absolutely. I'll show you some five-head solutions for this after the game, but for the all intents and purposes here, queen d1 is very solid. And then you got to start immediately working on asking yourself, can I get rid of this knight on d4? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. That was a very serious mistake. Okay, Do you see? see? Because again, in your mind, he's not castled and he's fucking around by pushing his pawns instead of castling. Make mm -hmm. him pay. Okay. Um, well, I can't... Hmm, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of like... Think. 
So the first move that came into my head is one that I don't think pans out. The first move that I thought of was going knight d5 and then looking to get an attack in that direction. But I don't think that punishes that move he just made right there. Nope, it does not. That... Now, the move that he made right there... He... Remember first principles. You have to start by looking at checks. Checks and captures are the first anchor in any position like this. Mm -hmm. So go through that process. Don't try to kind of shortcut it. And if you do that, what moves do you come up with? Well, the next thing was queen check on h5. I mean, he can't take that fork down there at c2 since he'll be in check. Bingo. From there, then I'd look for the checkmate on f7. Exactly. And why is h6 a mistake? Because normally after queen h5, that move can be met with g6, blocking the check. Right. Here, the pawn on g6 has lost its support. Exactly. Now, it's okay. not going to be direct checkmate if he brings his king up to e7. But what you do have is a combination of win his queen in two moves which I would like you to then find something you would not have, I would not have expected you to find even like, let's say a week ago, but now I think you have the tools necessary to, to, to crack it open. Assuming he's pushing King to E7. Yeah. Which he just did white to move okay. and win the queen in two moves. And you need to ask yourself immediately. Well, how theoretically am I even going to win the queen? Like what tactical techniques am I going to use? This one actually is your favorite. Yeah, so this is going right up there to d5, which puts a check. Go. Yep, and you saw it immediately, too. He's got to go up to d6, and then you pick off the queen. How? With a fork. Exactly. Knight f7, and, and to add insult to injury, you even take the queen with check. So he can't even take the pawn on c2 and the rook on a1 for some sort of consolation. He's just got to live with it. And, um, yeah, I think he... Sergio Alex... I think this might be his only loss in his in his long and illustrious <laughs> chess career, Charlie. Yeah, that's what he I was dealt thinking him too. And he just resigns. Very nice. Ooh. So this bishop f7 is a brutal combination. So before you jump in, I want to show you like, again, I I want to be careful about doing this, and I don't want to overwhelm you with shit, but I just want to give you a flavor of like how chess works at like a really high level. Yeah, I think that helps. Um. And I think you'll understand this. I think you, this is a logic that, that's relatively easy to grasp. Okay, I'm gonna, so close that previous analysis board and I'll invite you to a new one. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So essentially, takes knight g5 check. Okay, a couple things. First of all, if he would have sacrificed his queen, um, it's not as, as, as simple or as innocuous as it appears. Um, he can take on f2 here. Mm -hmm. And he forks your queen in his rook and in your rook. Could you give me at least two ways to deal with this move without losing the rook on h1? One way is something you should see quite quickly. The other is like a really beautiful move that you're going to kind of like, well. So I'm looking for a move that well, doesn't lose that rook. Right. So a move like queen d2 loses the rook. And black gets a lot yeah. of little, um, little, you know, trinkets for, for the queen. He gets a rook and a piece. Can you avoid black winning this rook? Just by moving the rook, but that sacks the queen. Okay. Well, you're actually quite close. If you move the rook, look at a black's king. Whenever the king is vulnerable oh, like this, right. where can you go? Just right up there to f1, he can't exactly. move Exactly, bingo. Rook f1. Oh, fuck. Um, and pinning the... And actually, you can even do something crazier. You can actually just castle in this position. You actually... That actually is illegal. Some people assume, wait a minute, that's an illegal move. Um, so, even though you push rook to f1, you can still castle off that? Yeah, yeah. No, but you're... Right. Wait, what are you asking exactly? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I thought you castled after you moved rook. I was going to say, what the fuck kind of crazy no, no, yeah, what, what, what rule yeah, so did I just castled. invent? Yeah, no, you castle here in the face yeah. of this knight. Okay. And I want the other move, yeah. though. I'm not satisfied just by that. I want the other way of stopping you from losing the rook. I need to empty my bladder, so I will give you 30 seconds to come up with this. I'll be right back. Okay.
Yes, I'm back. And then, so it's the queen to f3, is that what you're talking yeah, exactly, about? Exactly, exactly. Queen f3 check, and uh, then you can move the rook. So okay, just... just the, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no real reason to play that over the castling, right? Uh, no, I would play the castling, because also the castling, uh, you can basically pre-move rook takes f2 afterward, and then you get, on top of everything else... Two rooks for a piece. So you basically are just going to have an extra queen after that. Yeah. Or two pieces for a rook, rather. I misspoke. Um, good. Other than this, this is the moment that I wanted to kind of inspire you in, okay? After you played knight d4. Okay. Remember I mentioned how the better you get, the less reactive you become. Like, the better you get, the less afraid you are of threats. Because you begin to realize that in chess, there's only a certain number of threats that truly need to be reacted to. Like... If your opponent had played d6 attacking your queen, yes, this is a situation where I would have to move the queen. But if he plays knight d4, I'm looking at this pawn and I'm kind of scoffing at it because I'm looking at his king and how weak it is. And my first thought is not how do I defend this pawn and, and bringing the queen back to defend this pawn. It's can I ignore this threat and take the sting out of it so that I can actually focus on attacking. So the move <laughs> that I would make here is actually just a castle and basically, you know, be like... Take this pawn, be my guest, take this pawn, I don't care. Okay? And now mm -hmm. I'm like, can I sacrifice this rook? Can I keep accumulating pieces on the king side to sacrifice this rook? And I think the answer is yes, I would play the move knight d5. Accumulating, bringing another piece into the attack. And after takes, I think there is a very, very simple move queen f5. After which, even to you, it should become very, very clear that white's threats here are unstoppable. What specifically is white threatening? Right, going right to f7. Bingo. Queen cannot move anywhere. That's why we put the knight on d5 to stop the queen from coming to e7. Remember when I said the queen and the knight are the strongest, like, pair in all of chess? Yeah. Well, the queen and the two knights, like, queen cooperating with two knights is absolutely unstoppable. So black's only defense is rook to f8. Now you snap off this pawn on e5, but you don't do it just to take a pawn. Could you now find a way to transform the advantage from an attack to a very big material advantage? Winning the queen, actually. Without giving up my queen, obviously, so it's not just taking that bishop with the knight, right? No, no, you don't want to. You want to win his queen because remember, you have sacrificed a rook here, so you right. better find a way to deliver something. Yeah. So what I looked at was pushing the, uh, yeah, the knight. Jesus, I don't know why I started on that to h7, taking that pawn to threaten that rook. It's okay to be nervous. So that's actually a very <laughs> sensible move, but you have a way to win the queen directly. Right away? Yes. Look at his king. Does his king have any squares? No. So oh, it's I like see. It's a get... semi-checkmate. Yeah. So he's going to be forced to take on c7. That's Bingo. how you win the queen. Knight takes c7 gotcha. check, winning the queen. His knight on a1 is also stranded. He's also under a huge attack. So black can resign in this position, basically. Right. Okay. So okay. this is like the next level of tactics. When you are attacking, it's like you're on the freeway. You're looking for the exit. You're always looking for a way to exit the attack. And basically what I mean by that is you're always looking for a way to transform the attack into a very significant material advantage if you don't see checkmate. So mm -hmm. a lot of people think that an, an attack can only end a checkmate. Like attack, the next logical chain in the sequence is checkmate. But that's not true. In fact, most attacks at a grandmaster level do not actually end in checkmate. Some do, but a lot of them end with a transformation of the attack into let's say an extra two pawns or an extra piece or an extra queen, something like that. Um, does that kind of strike you as, as reasonable? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Good. So here's my proposed plan. We play one more game and then you basically jump into the tactics pool and I'm going to follow you and we're not going to do only fork related tactics. I want to see you do general tactics. And I want okay. to kind of see you walk through because that's really the next step. I want you to get extremely fluent with simple tactics. I want you to be able to see them in the snap of a finger. That might not be the most interesting thing, but I think it's an absolute, absolute must.